technology, talk about the future, give feedback to vendors. Uh, Stephen Fosquet, welcome to theCUBE again. Thank you, good to be here. Um, yeah, we've known each other now for a few years and uh, yeah, you're absolutely. out there with, with your team and you do all these awesome events, really chill events, but they're real valuable. You get into, you get into under the hood, you talk about the core issues and, and obviously with converged infrastructure, which is really an old definition, I mean HP kind of invented it going back you know, just as a way to cobble together network storage mm -hmm. and servers and give a customers this holistic view of the data center, which has always been the right vision. I've been a big yeah. fan of converged infrastructure, <laughs> but, you know, it's changing. Just advent of, you know, Dell stock price in 2008 was 20, high 20s, and just in those five years, it's dropped down to 10, and just going back three years, uh, three and a half, four years, three years, Flash has come on the scene, mm -hmm. virtualization market has changed radically, um, just a lot of stuff going on. So I want to ask you, you know, your perspective, because you've been following all these yeah. things under the hood. So, so, so one, what, what is going on with this modern infrastructure trends over the past mm -hmm. three years? And how does that relate to what Dell has? And, and tell us about what you're finding here at Dell World. Sure, well, the, the, the big question that I always put to people, I, I do a series of seminars on building um, modern infrastructure, basically, virtual, you know, infrastructure for server virtualization. Um, I've done about 30 dates on that topic, uh, and I've got more scheduled for next year. The big question that I put to them at the seminar, and I think this is uh, sort of my, my overriding thought, is this point that if you were to design IT from scratch, if you walked in with a clean sheet of paper to design anything you want, would you design what we've got now? And the answer is no freaking way. way. <laughs> no way in the world would I make a bunch of giant PCs attached to a bunch of you know fake disks over a specialized network. None of this makes sense. None of it makes sense. But yet, we have a sort of a push and pull situation here where you've got conventional applications that are designed for this sort of conventional Windows and Unix, you know, basically, you know, fat PC server world, and you've got to do something with them in the future. And that's the cool thing about virtualization is that it lets you transition from a real backward concept, which is sort of the Microsoft, you know, server concept, into uh, the future, which has, you know, standardized layers and, and standardized infrastructure. And that's why I'm really excited about this whole idea of converged infrastructure. I love some of the, some of the ideas that we're seeing from, you know, up and coming companies in converged infrastructure, because they blow up the data center. You mean like who, like a Nutanix? Oh, Nutanix uh, is yeah. the best example yeah, I can I, think of off the top of my yeah, head. But okay. you've got to, you know, you've got to mention scale computing yeah. and SimpliVity. You know, Versto is a company that has a lot of great technology sure, in that Mark's area. Company, right? Absolutely, and um, and in in all these cases, what they're doing is they're basically asking that core question, which is, if we were to do this again, how would we do it? How would we do it differently? But yet maintaining backward compatibility. The problem with the cloud is there's no compatibility. Basically, the cloud needs new applications. And those applications are coming, but they're not going to destroy the entire world. You know, they're not going to take over the world instantly. We're still going to have to have um, the same kind of applications uh, running for 10 years, for 20 years. It's just the new applications are going to run in the cloud. Can you so. compare and contrast the, the upstarts, the ones you just mentioned, you yep. know, as a group, with the whales? Um, Absolutely, yeah. There's a sense that, oh, the whales are in this now, and you know, the game's mm -hmm. over. But, Based on your comments, I, I, I'm inferring not, not the case. Yeah, right? I, I think that the um, we're just in the very, very beginning of basically those big four companies, maybe big five or six with uh, Cisco and EMC getting into the battle. <laughs> um, you know, we're just in the beginning of of having those big companies have a really competitive offering. Uh, if you if you look at a Nutanix and you know a converged infrastructure offering from any of these big guys, it is night and day. On a technology level, on an integration level, on management, it, there's no comparison. Can you add some color to that? In, in, yeah. what, in what respect, I mean, well, from your perspective? Okay, so, so let, me, let, me, let me boil it down. The hardest challenge in IT, the number one challenge technically is scaling. Getting uh, something, anything, storage, network servers, whatever, getting it to get bigger and get smaller on demand. The coolest thing that the cloud does is scale to tremendous levels. If you look at scalable offerings from most of these major corporations, um, they're, they scale in, in moderate terms. If you want to go to two, from two to four to six, the scaling in they can do that. Yeah. If you want to go from yeah. two to 50 back to eight, 
there's no way in the world they can do that. Bring in the forklift. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's just not possible. Okay. And so if you're going to have a converged infrastructure, it has to scale. And frankly, that's a huge technical challenge. I'm not criticizing them for not having that because it's just, it's not impossible, but it's extremely difficult to add scale to an existing system. Look at NetApp. I mean, they've been working on that for almost, a, what, a decade yeah, now, trying to right. scale their systems. Yep. And, you know, I'm getting my hats off to them because it's such a massive challenge. Okay, so are the cloud service providers picking up on some of those new guys? I mean, obviously some of the more established cloud service providers are going to, they're going to work with the EMCs and the HPs and, yep. and maybe even IBM and, and Dells, but are the are there merging, you know, the new cloud service guys picking up on these new modern converged infrastructure players because that, I would think that scaling would be yeah. really attractive to them. Yeah, they're, they're definitely, um, the, the cloud providers, uh, a lot of them, well, I think it's probably fair to say that most of their dollars go to traditional companies. I mean, Dell is one of the biggest arms vendors to the cloud yeah. in existence. Right. Uh, I mean, in fact, uh, I don't know if you know this, but Dell actually has a specialized server that is not available to ordinary customers. It's only available to massive scale cloud customers. And Dell sells those things like crazy. Dell as ODM. Absolutely, <laughs> and, 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 and Dell is incredibly competitive too. So if you talk to the, the cloud providers, uh, a lot of them you know, originally had these ideas that they're going to go direct to the Chinese you know, OEMs and manufacturers, and they're going to you know, buy stuff out of Taiwan, and integrate it themselves. They abandoned that idea once they saw the reality of it, and they started going to just buying Dell, 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 and uh, and that's good for Dell. Uh, it's not high margin, but it certainly is high volume, and high volume helps. Well, and Dell makes money off of this. I mean, because of their scale, right? So it seems to me, I made the comment to John earlier. It's almost like Dell refuses to shrink too fast. I mean, one strategy could be just shrink down and then start growing again. Yep. But it's like Dell ref almost refuses to do that because their scale allows them buying power mm -hmm. that where they can compete in yeah. markets like this. What are your thoughts on that strategy? Do you well, think that's I, the right approach? I, I think it is. I think it was a terrible, dreadful, awful mistake of HP to even think ponder <laughs> getting out of that <laughs> volume because <laughs> that volume is so tremendously valuable in terms of purchasing power. Mm -hmm. I mean, what does Apple have? Apple has volume, and the minute one of these big guys gives up that volume, it hurts them. I mean, I think IBM has been massively, massively hurt on the server side by giving up the desktop business because they can no longer go to Micron and to Intel and to all these other companies and say, um, you know, we're your number one customer, work with us. And their x86 business is in a box because of that. Absolutely. Yeah. And, it, and that would happen to Dell. If Dell gave up on making laptops, on making desktops, on making, you know, any of this stuff that is admittedly low volume, or not, not low volume, I'm sorry, low margin, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they would immediately lose a lot of their ability to command, you know, attention from inside. supply chain Steve, So Steve, so yeah. we, you know, we are, we're all kind of uh, older, older school guys, but playing in the new world. Um, we all remember the Dell, Dell transformation into the, into the mobile. They had, they were a mail order PC, then they had this industry standard PC that became a, such a staple, low cost and direct mail, so on. But they had no, they had no notebook back in the 90s. Yeah. And you know, they built a great notebook business from scratch, and they did it in a way, in the Dell way, and they were very successful. Yep. So you know, begs the question, why can't they just build <laughs> tablets and mobile phones the same way? That's um, a good and, question. and we were talking about that, and the, and the, and, and Mark Hopkins and I and Dave. We're talking about this, and the issue was they had an OS to build on. That was Windows. Windows was a standard. So, pretty straightforward differentiation. Hardware, availability, low cost, done, reliability. They won that game, they did great. Now we have an OS challenge, right? So, yeah. doing great on the servers, Unix, Linux, uh, yep. Windows, and Windows Server, NT, all that stuff's happening, still there. But right now it's a jump ball between Android and, and Windows 8. I mean, if you look at Apple's success, Anything over a $2,000 price point is Apple's dominates. Yep. Quality product, crushing everybody. Um, below, <laughs> below the $2,000, say $1,500 price point, you have tablets and you have phones, right? So Android is killing that market. So you know, you're being cannibalized <laughs> on the edge. Yeah. So this whole BYOD could blow up. So the question to you is, one, do you agree with, let's talk about that, do you agree with that? And two, what could Dell do to differentiate themselves with Windows 8 or with an Android phone? Because I don't think Dell has a problem building something fast that's going to be reliable and strong. The, 
question is, what's the OS, yeah. and what do they differentiate? Is VDI an opportunity? Are these things there? So what's your take on, yeah. on those two topics? Windows 8, sure. Android Jump Ball, and then yeah. um, the virtualization or uh, a VDI kind of component. Sure, well let's, I mean, let's start with the mobile devices. Um, I think, I think the, the, the true test of success for any, anything in the market is when it becomes just, it, it, it ceases to become an unusual thing and it just becomes the market. I think BYOD, the tipping point, has passed. BYOD is not just here. It's a must have. It's, and, and, and not only that, I think that the term will never catch on because it is ob an obsolete term because who cares? That's just how things are done. Yeah, yeah it's you a know, must have. It's, it's a, it's to it's the a, point now, yeah, where people are just going to walk in there and they're going to say, you know, this is, my, this is my MacBook and this is my iPad. Get it on the network. Yeah, absolutely, totally and, agree with you. And and the IT has to do that. You know, I mean, IT is the house elves of Harry Potter. You know, I mean, basically they have all the power, but none of the controls. <laughs> we lost our lights, we still, we're still on camera. We're still on camera, we still got some lights. <laughs> oh, we're going to cut it off, okay. All right. all right, we're right back after this. This is the cube, after dark. Yes. <laughs> Let's do some dancing. What the?